You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about attitudes towards entrepreneurship and the free market. And in particular, I thought I'd talk about what it is that people fear uh, when they're afraid of the market and of entrepreneurialism and are really launching themselves onto the free market or indeed uh, what they fear about people who are involved in free market type activities. Um, I thought about this because I know that um, a lot of people who are interested in entrepreneurship are afraid of of actually making the jump, but also myself, I, I definitely had some fears about making the jump into into entrepreneurship. And the other reason I thought this might be interesting is because I think if you if you do get involved in entrepreneurship, you will also encounter a lot of anti free market sentiment. And I think it's interesting to consider where that sentiment is coming from. On a more abstract level, you know, there are a lot of arguments that people make about the free market and its impact and whether or not it really would work, you know, if we did have a free market and and what the relationship between the market and poverty is and these kinds of things. But those are all very, very abstract type of arguments. And what I'm interested in talking about in this podcast is what people are afraid of Um, when they think about getting involved in the free market themselves and what it is that underpins um, a lot of anti-market sentiment. And so I tried to think about this in terms of my own experience um, because I did experience um, fears about uh, getting involved in more entrepreneurial or free market activities. And on an individual level, there are three things that, that um, I can think of that people can be afraid of when it comes to the free market. And those are trade, that is having to sell and getting involved in, in selling, uh, the division of labor, which really I just mean getting a job and specializing in something, and private property. And by that, I really mean taking responsibility for your stuff and respecting other people's stuff. And these are kind of three responsibilities that the market, that you have to really adopt to take part in the market. And so I'll go through each one and and talk about my experience of what it was that I was afraid of and how I think that is also something other people might be experiencing. So trade and selling I mean, this is obviously a key aspect of entrepreneurialism or any free market activity. And by this, what I'm really talking about is finding something that is useful to others that you can provide, you know, providing value in a voluntary exchange. And that is pretty scary. Um, I know that, um, you know, when I was at university um, and was interested in doing academic research and I did postgraduate research I went on to do a PhD but one of the things for me about academic research was that frankly uh, it's much easier um, doing academic research than it is uh, selling stuff you know I I think it's easier to get a PhD than it is to uh, be an entrepreneur and to sell to people psychologically it's much much easier um even intellectually, I think it's easier. Um, having done both, I can say that uh, it's a lot easier to get a PhD than it is um, to be an entrepreneur and sell uh, successfully. And I think the reason is that there's a huge personal vulnerability that comes from being involved in voluntary transactions. You open yourself up to enormous um, potential for failure and potential for rejection. So... You know, when you are an academic, um, as I was in my case, so that's a case I can talk about more because I have experience of it. Um, when you're an academic, you know, you can noodle about and write things and 
publish papers and do research and think about things. And yeah, you can fail in the sense that you can not uh, get awarded your degree or you can not get your paper published and so forth. But it's nothing like the same experience of trying to sell and not being able to. Um, that's a lot more psychologically challenging. And also, it's a lot more demanding learning how to sell and learning how to provide value that, that other people want. Um, you are more vulnerable because you're dependent on other people deciding whether or not they find what it is that you're selling valuable. And that means you also have to have the humility to change what it is that you're selling and to adjust and to make sure that you can really provide value that other people want, not that you think they should want. And that's something that people understand deep in their bones just how difficult that can be psychologically. And consequently, it, uh, people are afraid of that. And I think that's one of the reasons that uh, people don't want to get involved in more free market activities. The second um, thing that occurs to me that people are afraid of when it comes to the free market and entrepreneurship is the division of labor. And in particular, what on an individual level, what I mean by that is specializing in something and getting a job in something that is a specialist field, developing your skills so that you provide something quite unique uh, to others. And this is obviously, you know, the foundation of all of the um, great wealth and, and diversity of economic activity that comes from the division of labor. Lots of people producing different things, working together um, with very different specialist skills creates this wonderful diverse economy. But at an individual level, um, there's also a huge vulnerability in that again. And I experienced this um, when I, I remember very clearly thinking about what to study at university and I had no clue. I didn't know what I wanted to specialize in and I thought well what if I you know if I take this course and then I decide I don't like it then I'm going to be stuck with these particular this particular knowledge or skill and I'm not going to know what to do with it and the same was true afterwards when doing postgraduate work and and uh, improving my skills in very specialist areas I went for it and I decided to do that, but I definitely experienced the the, the concern that, you know, what happens if um, if I can't do anything with these skills? And I know that a lot of people who think they would quite like to do entrepreneurship, but they don't really know what to go into or which field to go into, I, I can see them also experiencing this fear that, well, you know, they might pursue a specific type of work um, and develop specific types of skills and then find that the marketplace doesn't value those skills and then they're, they're going to be uh, in a very vulnerable position and, and that's something that people are afraid of. The other aspect that I think that the division of labor really forces on people, which I think can be scary, is that when you take specific responsibility for a skill or a service or, you know, a business even, if you're developing some specialist business um, as part of your entrepreneurial activity, what you're really doing is taking responsibility for being the guy that does this, that does X. And if X doesn't get done, it's your fault. It's your responsibility. And that's scary too, because that's, you know, really putting yourself on the line and being the person that has responsibility for a specific skill or a specific area of expertise um, as part of the division of labor. And that's something I think people can also be afraid of because, again, that actually puts kind of puts the spotlight on you and means that, you know, you have to make sure that you take care of what it is that you do. Whereas in academia, when I was in, in academia, as a, you can just uh, publish bits and bobs and, and nothing really depends on you. Um, you know, it's not like anything's not going to work the next day if you don't show up. Um, even if you're a lecturer or um, a supervisor, PhD supervisor or any of these things, you know, you don't really have uh, responsibility in the same kind of way as you do in the free market. The third aspect that people can be afraid of is the personal responsibility that comes from a real respect for private property. And I think this on an individual level, this is really about looking after your own stuff 
and respecting other people's stuff. I personally never had this um, anti-private property sentiment, and that's probably because of my background, because I grew up in a squat, and I, I grew up in a place where property rights were really not respected. So I, I saw a lot of value in property rights because I saw what it was like to live without property rights. But I know that there is a fear that people have that, you know, if if they are launched onto the free market and are, are, do become entrepreneurs or get, really go for it, then they have to really be responsible for their own stuff and for the income that they earn and for the way that they manage their own money and for the success or otherwise that they achieve. And they also have to acknowledge and, uh, and respect what it is that other people do um, in their own entrepreneurial ventures and respect them for you know the, the value that they've been able to accumulate and the money that they earn and that you know there can be some some real emotional challenges in that because that can be humiliating you know if you feel uh, that you have a lot of value in a university type environment and you know you're doing all sorts of interesting thoughts as far as you're concerned you launch yourself onto the free market you may find that nobody cares and that um, what you're doing doesn't have any value for anyone and then you've got to res uh, really respect the people who are doing something that you might consider to be pointless and silly but they might be making a hell of a lot of money doing it which means that the marketplace has actually got a lot more respect for what they're doing than from what you do and that can be humiliating and so that's another thing that i think people can fear um, in the free market i think these these fears of these three things trade division of labor and private property they really show up in anti-free market sentiments you know i i think the fears are really relevant on an individual level on the level of what the impact that it can have on you as a person but they show up in in a lot more abstract ways so for example all of the famous socialists possibly with the exception of uh, robert owen were total failures when it comes to free market activity none of them really were entrepreneurs most of them were lawyers or lawyers and academics and you know they I think their anti-commercialism um, and their bias against the idea of, of trade, uh, I should imagine is partly to do with the fear that they themselves had of what they would be if they were involved in in free market activities. And you see that anti-commercialism, that attitude you can see all around you. And people, people do like to um, hate on celebrities who make money by selling... Uh, vacuous products and you know i i don't uh, have interest in a lot of things that um, people are selling in in uh, i don't know music and perfumes and and uh, and lots of things that celebrities sell but you know as far as i'm concerned if they are um selling things uh voluntarily and people are buying them voluntarily as a free market exchange then good luck to them and there are a lot worse things in the world that people are doing um, and I don't see any reason to hate on that kind of activity. But I think that um, when people do express those um, sentiments, there is a sense of fear and envy that can come from looking at other people um, who somehow seem to make success themselves in entrepreneurship and on the free market, um, doing things that uh, some people just uh, can't imagine themselves making a success of. When it comes to the division of labor, there are lots and lots of ways in which this fear of the division of labor gets translated into more abstract arguments even though it, it really is on an individual level that it matters so you will find many many um, books and theories about how human beings started off you know happy and then things kind of went wrong when the division of labor kicked in it's Jean-Jacques Rousseau is the original guy who express this idea very clearly but um, the idea that uh, everything went wrong as soon as we started having the division of labor and agriculture started and uh, that that's expressed in many different fields and I, I'm not an expert on the history of, um, of uh, the division of labor I did economic history at university but um, still I, I don't consider myself to be an expert but I do know quite a lot about it and I think that a lot of the attitudes that people have towards the division of labor are not to do with any any facts or history they're to do with the fear that they themselves may have of it you see it also in the old aristocratic ideas that um 
if you're successful then you you shouldn't work and that trade is somehow bad you know the the old conservative ideas against trade um in that come from the kind of landed aristocracy of course private property that's something that um you know there are many many theories of how bad private property is probably most explicitly in marxism the idea that humans were happy when we had uh, primitive communism and that there was no private property and that that's something that ultimately you know we should be aiming to go back to uh, i think that itself on an individual level may reflect a fear that people have of what how they would do on the free market and so anyway i just thought i'd uh, throw some of those ideas out there because if you're thinking about being an entrepreneur and thinking about getting involved in entrepreneurial activities it's worth thinking about you know what fears you may have about it and also what other people who express anti entrepreneurial sentiments might really be afraid of it's okay to be afraid of of um of launching yourself onto the, the free market it's a it's a scary place um when you think about it ultimately you know i think it's a great place to be and it's a really wonderful experience um to do entrepreneurship uh, but it's okay to uh to think about bit, uh, the fears that you have i think it's it's not okay to translate those into um you know theories that project your fears out into the world and and blame the market for things um because that actually is is not to uh, overcome your own fears and to not to move forward in a way that you can uh feel the fear and do it anyway as i say so I hope that's interesting. Just the few thoughts that I had. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to the Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email Jake at the Voluntary Life dot com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on the Voluntary Life dot com.